I want to thank everyone for joining us today for the Art of Performing a DVI with Auto Text Me. I am Michael Pitolo. I am the lead training consultant for Auto Text Me. With me today is my cohort, the head trainer for Auto Text Me, Greg Kendall. Hi, Michael. Uh, it's glad to be here uh, with everyone today. So I look forward to, um, to joining you and uh, uh, the great webinar to come. Thank you. And today we're going to be going over the art of actually performing the digital vehicle inspection. Um, and we did ask a poll question going into this. And the poll question we did ask was, how often does your shop use videos in the DVI? And we asked this question specifically because we're going to go over a section today that's going to be something new that we're going to be focusing on, uh, which is using video more frequently and in different manners in your DVI. So it's why we wanted to ask this particular poll question. Um, Greg, was there anything that stood out to you in this poll? You know, um, I'm really intrigued. It looks like we have about, what, just over 32% there are uh, frequently and always using uh, videos in their DVIs. That's, a, that's really good, guys. Um, and then for the other 60 or so, uh, 60 or 70% there, um, hopefully we can get you some uh, strategies to, to uh, start employing that uh, in your DVIs today. Exactly. And, and that's, that's what it, it's really going to boil down today. Uh, we want to just get people thinking about things in a different manner and using the DVI in a, di in a different fashion. All right. So in today's, we are going to be discussing the techniques that can be utilized to become more efficient in completing your DVIs. Uh, components to delivering a higher quality inspection how advisors can perfect the report prior to delivering it to the customer, and how to get a higher open rate from the customers. These are things we want to focus on today. Um, and like I said, as we go through this, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. We do have someone who I forgot to introduce. I don't know how. Mr. Craig O'Neill, who you guys have been seeing in the chat, uh, is actually looking at the uh, holding up the back end for us today and moderating and keeping an eye on our chat. Um, for some odd reason, he decided I should go ahead and take this to take the lead on this one. Uh, and he wanted to, to sit in the background for a change. So that's why you guys have me. I think he was having a bad hair day. It probably was. And we know how much Craig loves his hair. We all love Craig's hair, actually. We're all a little hey, bit jealous. Hey, I'm still hair. I'm still hair. I know. <laughs> yeah. I was going to tell everyone you got a bad haircut. But we didn't want to. We didn't want people to get upset. We didn't want to cause a panic. So, so let's set some baselines. Yes, on the baselines. Um, your shop has a functioning inspection process. This is something we're assuming as we go through with this. We have done webinars on how to do DVIs and, and, the, and the process of inspections. Um, the art of advising comes to mind, uh, one we've done recently. So at this point, we're assuming that you are looking at vehicles you're estimating what is being found and you're presenting those estimates to the customer. Uh, would you say that's, that's what we're assuming here, Greg? Yeah, I think those are the baselines, right? We, we have to assume that your shop has a function inspection process, right? And um, that you're currently using it. Uh, that's the other piece of it. So Exactly. So building off of that, then, why do we have or why are we doing DVIs, Michael? Well, for one, we want to set the customer's expectations. And when we go to set the customer's expectations, we want to let them know, yes, that we're doing the inspection, but also what are they going to get in this inspection? Are they going to get pictures? Are they going to get videos? How are we documenting this information to them? We want to let the customer know, hey, Mr. Customer, you're going to receive an inspection from us, and it's going to include pictures and videos of what we're finding on your vehicle. Um, Greg, anything else you would like to, to add to that? You know, I, th I find that this is one of the most important steps uh, to ensure that customers are opening and viewing the information in the DVI. You know, shops go through a lot of trouble to actually um, create uh, the, the vehicle inspection and report the, the findings to the customer. It's a waste when we do it and the customer doesn't actually open it. They have no idea what they're getting or how they're going to get it, right? 
Are we going to send it to them via text message or email, or is it going to be a paper printout? Um, you know, something of that nature, right? Now, hopefully, um, we're going to actually show you uh, reasons that you want to do it digitally today um, and uh, the benefits of, of presenting that information to your customer uh, in that digital format. You know, one other thing that comes to mind is we talked a lot about this in uh, one of our previous um, webinars, The Art of Advising, back in February. Um, and I think, um, Craig, could you throw up that um, link to that previous webinar for uh, people in the chat there um, as well? So, Absolutely. awesome. Yeah, and if you have not seen before, um, going back and looking at some of our old webinars from our uh, YouTube page is, I highly advise doing it because it's going to build up upon things we're talking about in this one. Um, so if you do need some refreshers, you can go back through and watch those and, and we'll get you up to the speed to where we're at in, in this particular pre uh, presentation. Now, the benefit, beneficial outcomes of doing the DVI, we all know there's reasons why we want to do an inspection on the customer's vehicle. Um, from the business standpoint, it's going to increase your revenue. It's documenting what is going on. So it's protecting the shop from that aspect. From the staff standpoint, it's a time saver. It gives a professional image of that employee. And again, it comes down to documentation. This is going to protect the technician. If something's changed, the, the DVI shows that it's been changed. Everything that gets done is captured and documented. So we know who did it, when it happened, and it, it's saved forever. From the client standpoint, it's knowledge, it's trust, it's, again, documentation. We want to be able to have records to look back at and see what this vehicle has been like. Um, other things that come to mind, uh, you know, go into a quick story I have here about a ball joint. And this was from a shop that I was talking to, and the customer had a, came in with a ball joint or came in for uh, an oil change. They recommended a ball joint because the ball joint was failing. And it was marked as a red ball joint and had excessive play, was in dire need of needing replaced. Customer declined it. Two weeks later, that ball joint broke on the customer doing 60 miles an hour down the highway and they totaled the vehicle. When the adjuster came and because the customer said, well, I had the car at the shop recently, maybe they did something. When the customer, when the insurance company came back to the, to the shop, they showed them the DVI and that was it. Shop was protected because the shop did catch that ball joint and presented it to the customer. They showed the proof that it was texted to the customer. The customer read it. it everything was there that, that showed them that that customer knew that that part was bad. Um, so there's lots of different reasons that that can be used, and it happens on a daily basis. So we want to make sure we're protecting ourselves, our clients, and our, and our staff from these things. Um, one other thing that like that this goes with when it comes to doing DVIs, you know, time is money. And we've heard that phrase thousands of times. Time is money. Well, money buys tools. Tools save us time. Time is money. The DVI is a tool. Just and, like any other tool in the toolbox, right? And when it comes to time and money, we do want to know. Do you incentivize your techs for completing inspections? So we're going to post up a quick question here. And if you guys go ahead and answer, do you currently incentivize your techs for completing inspections? We just want to know how that tech is, is, is using their time. What is their time worth? And we'll come back to those polls in a second here. It looks like from the from the early polling, it's a uh, it's a no on the uh, on whether overwhelmingly the tech overwhelmingly yeah yeah so looks like about ninety two percent say say no um, they're not incentivized that's uh, that's kind of shocking actually to me uh, a little bit I'm very shocked I'm very shocked to see to see no uh, that high in the board um, I would like to say I do believe tech should be incentivized in some way. For completing inspections um whether it's built into their time um 
for the job uh, or if the lot, the inspection itself actually has some form of a pay, depending on whether your techs are flat rate hourly, there should be some form of incentive for completing a proper inspection. It is their time and their time is their money. Um, so I would like to see that go in that fashion. And I think over time, we're going to get to that point uh, with continuing to educate everybody on, on the importance of doing a proper DVI and to do a proper DVI. It does take a little bit of time. Michael, uh, I think Brian and chat uh, had an excellent point that's worth drawing out here. And uh, that currently they're just trusting the process to reward the technicians, which I think is the big reason why a lot of shops are not choosing to incentivize the technicians further. And I understand. they prove the process of rewarding in and of itself. What do you think of that? I do understand that uh, completely because we know for a fact that if a shop is is consistently completing inspections and sending them to the customer that they're the tickets are going to having extra jobs they're going to have in more time the tech is going to make more money on that job um but it still comes down to the same fact when a customer comes in to have that diagnostic done you're charging that customer for that diagnostic because you're charging them for the tech's time and expertise when we're expecting the tech to complete the inspection, we should be rewarding them for their time and their expertise. Um, there is going to be a reward for things getting sold, but a lot of stuff still has to come into play to get that reward on a, on a routine basis. But we do know, Greg, you could attest to that, that, that completing DVIs is going to show reward in the process. The process does reap reward. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and, and even as, as Brian mentioned, right. Um, yeah, it just the, the reward m may be uh, essentially um, whether or not, uh, you know, the, the ticket grows, right? Um, less tickets, less work uh, in and out of the bay, less shuffling around. Um, and that is more productive uh, within the shop for sure. 100%. So with that, with that information, let's, let's go ahead into our DVI method. Um, Greg, we've talked about the CBAM. Um, previously, I know Craig and Chris have formally gone in and, and discussed things with the CBAM. And what you're seeing is is the graph here on the right hand side that we link to our relate, relate repeat, and refrain. Yep. And for those of you that that may not have heard the term CBAM before, right? Um, it is the concerns based adoption model, and it's that uh, as uh, Michael had mentioned there, it's that relate, repeat, reframe, right? And um, the big thing that we want to talk about here is um, noticing that, that there's a dip here um, in maybe productivity or sales or what have you when you make a change within the shop. Um, and each time that happens, uh, there's a dip until we get um, the routine in place, right? Uh, then we can refine and, and integrate and then reframe and, and uh, look at our results at that particular point in time, right? So, a couple methods to um, you know, for relating, right? Um, how are you? Um, how are you performing your DVIs, right, Michael? Exactly. And we do have a couple of different methods. There's a, a line by line method, a head start method, and the new method we're going to be introducing is the video inspection. That's one of the things we'll be we'll be discussing today. And and once you pick your method, it, it's up to you to repeat that method religiously. You want to make that 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 method part of your daily routine. Um, I did see a, something in the chat about the days when a technician has all their work stacked. Are they more willing to do a thorough inspection? Um, and that question came from Mike Cochran. If it's part of their routine, they're going to do it on every vehicle. It's part of their routine. The same way I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is go out to my Keurig and put a cup, and, and put a cup in, throw a cup of water in and, and make my coffee. It's part of my daily routine. And when it becomes part of my routine, I'm going to do it repeatedly and religiously on every vehicle regardless of where my, my, what my stack of work is part of my process. And that's the level we need to get it to. And I think that's where people find the dip. That's the dip we're talking about, especially when you're implementing these methods, when you're getting into the repeat portion of this, when you're learning that repeat portion, you're going to go into the information. You're going to go into that dip because it's going to take you time to build your process and make it part of your routine. I think we were discussing before the meeting, Greg, how many days did it take? to make something a new habit 
Yeah. Um, for most people, it's upwards of 60 days, a little bit over that. I think 62 or 66 days, if I recall correctly. It, to make something a habit. And through the course of that process, making that a habit is, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes work to make it part of your process. And that's where the dip comes into play because the DVI is going to take a little extra time to complete. It's something you have to think about. When I drive a manual transmission, I've been driving them my whole life. I don't like automatics. And I get in a car and I shift without thinking about it. I don't, I don't think, oh, the revs are here. I have to shift into second. It's just routine. It's second nature. I don't, it, it doesn't even become part of my thought process. When I first started, though, you're, you're watching that count, you're watching the RPMs, you're like, shift, and you're paying very close attention to everything before it becomes part of the routine. Um, but once you get into the routine, that's when things start to go up. That's where this, the dip comes into play. But once you build it into part of your routine, that's when you start getting into refining it. You've gotten to integration now, and now you can start to reframe the way your business is being run and how things are working. Very true. Very true. I know as a technician, um, you know, as, as a uh, seasoned technician in the shop, um, that I was at uh, for a long time when when a vehicle came in and there wasn't an inspection line on the ticket, um, I I handed the ticket right back to the to the advisor and, and said, why aren't we inspecting this one, right? Um, and it takes it, it is a team effort, right? When you bring in a new um, technician or advisor or a new team member at all, um, they have to learn this um, as well. So it's uh, it's a continuous process for sure. My favorite exactly. thing with that CBAM chart is the fact that it, it just shows it's okay to have that dip. It's also manageable. And there's, there's, there's a point later where you're going to be better than you were before. You exactly. just got to push through it. Exactly. It, it, and that's where, it, from, from the training team, I, I mean, I'm going to speak on behalf of the training team as a whole here, but I know we all feel it and have seen it. It is the dip that is the hardest thing to get a shop through when they start doing DVIs for the first time. When they first start and they learn, they're very gung-ho, they want to get in and start doing it. And then they start implementing and they notice that it takes time. And then that, that, that excitement weans a little bit as the dip comes into play. Getting a shop through that dip is the hardest part of the process, but also the most rewarding when you see them get to the refinement and integration parts. And you see things start to happen and it starts to click and it starts to get, it starts to reach that refrain part. And the shop now has a different vibe and a different feeling about it. When you call, you know, when you call in week three or four of a shop, and then again, you call in week 15 of a shop being online. Big what's difference. the difference you hear? What, what, what's the difference you hear from that, from that owner or that, that uh, manager at that shop? Uh, overwhelmingly, um, when they implement a new process or a successful process like this, Michael, it's it's always um, you know later on down the road, it's always that thanks for sticking with us and and introducing us to this uh, particular um, you know method uh, or tool, and um, you, you know it's it's really changed uh, the way we do business. Yeah, it really has, and. Going into the, to the different methods, and this is where I want to focus on in this particular part, is getting us into the different methods we're going to use to complete the inspections. And most of these, if you are one of our clients or you are a DVI client who is currently using the inspection process, you're going to be probably utilizing one of the first two methods we're going to be bringing into play here. And the first method is the line-by-line -line method. And this is usually the method that I start a new tech off with, and it is taking the inspection and physically going line by line with the inspection, putting the note in, taking the picture as you're going through with it. And it is, it's the common way to start the process. Um, and it, but what it does is it helps build the routine and the routine goes into the next process that I'm, I'm going to be going into. But it gives the tech the I, what's going on with the inspection. How do I complete the inspection? What order are the items in the inspection in? What am I looking at? That's what they're learning in the line-by-line -line method. Now, 
I will always say this. There is never a 100% correct way to do it all the time. I'm going to come across people who say, well, I do it this way. I am faster than someone who does it that way. Great. That is the way that works best for you. That is your process. That is the process you work. Um, But it's not the same for everybody. So that's why we have and teach these multiple different ways of completing an inspection because different people are going to find different ways to be quicker. And I, I would, I would add that, um, and I think you, or I would reiterate that this is usually the least efficient method that, that line by line item. Um, it's the equivalent of back in the paper days, right. Um, of taking your clipboard around and then inspecting each item in the order that they're listed on the, um, on the clipboard. Right. And, um, that's not necessarily how we, you know, do, um, do service today. Right. Um, You know, as a journeyman tech, um, you certainly get into uh, building out your own process and and look at uh, looking at vehicles in the same way uh, each time they come in, right? Uh, making sure that you hit all of those key points in the in the inspection. But I also would say um, that there's no shame in doing DVIs in this method as well, right? Um, Never. Just like you mentioned, right? If it's faster or more efficient, or maybe even not efficient, but you're more complete. Uh, and building a quality product this way, Mm -hmm. by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, I would just add that if you're going to use the line-by-line method, um, keep your line items simple on the DVI, right? Don't make them um, big and long, right? So that makes it more efficient than um, as far as that goes. And when we talk about the efficiency of it, and this is something that it goes towards the bringing on the new, the new process, whether it's starting a DVI, even in the line by line aspect of it, every time you do something for the first time, or you're starting something new, or you're trying something new for the first time, you are not going to be an expert at it. You're not going to be efficient at it. It's going to, there's going to be stumbles. There's going to be trips. It's going to take you time to get to that point. And when you look at completing an inspection, just like any other function of your job, the first time you had to do a rear main seal. Did you beat the time? Probably, Probably not. By the time you've done your 20th and 30th or 40th rear main seal, you're beating the time in that aspect. You've learned ways to get around different aspects. You know, I can put this, I, I can, I can use this transmission hoist, uh, hoist that I can hold up the transmission. I can unbolt. I don't have to drop the whole, you know, the whole subframe down. There's different tricks and things you learn. And now you've become more efficient at it because you've been doing them for longer, for a longer period of time. The same thing is going to go when you start using one of these methods. The second style of method I like, and currently we're calling this the head start method because it starts in your head. It's mental at first. Just so you know, we are not locked in on this name. So if you guys can come up with a better name for this, please put it in the chat. We would love to get a different name for this method. But for right now, we're calling it the head start method because that was the best we can come up with. So with that being said, the head start method, this is where you're going to start looking at the vehicle more in that line where we assume that you already have an inspection process. And from my standpoint, even if there's not a process in place, most techs, that I know when they bring a vehicle in for the first time, they walk around that vehicle and they look at some things, regardless of whether there's an inspection. It's, it's, it's part of a lot of text nature, catch a leak, see this, eh, shake down the front end a little bit, see what's, see what comes loose. And this is the same part. This is that same process. You're doing that same thing. You're going around the car. You don't have your tablet in your hand. You don't have a work order in your hand. You're literally just going around the car in your mind, looking at everything noting different damages, noting the loose components, noticing any leaks. And at that point, after you've looked around the vehicle, now you could take your glove off, your gloves off, pick up your tablet, go around, snap the pictures of what you needed to take the pictures of. And you take them all at once and you load them into the photo gallery of your device. And then you open up the inspection and you load all those photos 
into one line of the DVI and you move those photos to where you need them to go. And then you complete the inspection all at one time. I have found this method to be the most efficient. And I will tell you the story here again, story time from Mr. Michael. Um, before I worked for auto text me after my years of working uh, in automotive repair shops, I spent three years working as a field rep for a third party company that was hired out to do multiple things in the automotive industry, whether it was, uh, going out and being a claims adjuster for a warranty company or going out and assessing a vehicle that was coming in off lease that a dealership said was more than they could look at. And it needed special attention. Um, and a few other things that I, I was, you know, I did the uh, audits of uh, certified programs for auto manufacturers, a lot of different stuff. But in the case of this, I had to do digital inspections when I had to go do an inspection on a lease turn in GM required 35 photos before you even took a picture of damage. It was 35 stock photos had to be taken on every inspection. And then because these cars were ones that the dealership said were not, were too bad to go to auction and needed special attention, they were excessively damaged. I was doing an average of 50 photos per car. That is a lot. That is not something you're going to see on average on a digital vehicle inspection. And my portion was, I used to go through the inspection when I first started in the job, I would take my tablet out and I would go line by line. Put the, put the tablet down. And at the time I was using a digital camera that I had to load the photos on. So I'd put the, I'd put the tablet down. I'd pick up my camera out of my pocket, take the picture and go about to the next line until I got comfortable doing that. And I put the tablet down and I walked up to the car and I took all the photos at one time. And then I'd go load the photos and then I would do the report. My average inspection time went from 21 minutes in inspection to 13 minutes in this in inspection. I was able to almost half the amount of time it took for me to complete the inspection. Being someone who was paid per job they closed out through the course of the day, if I hit a dealership and can do 15, 20 cars instead of only doing 10, I doubled my money for that day. Big difference, isn't it? Yes, it was. It was a very big difference. And what it is, is it's just the fact that because you're doing it in your mind, because you understand where the DVI is, what needs to be looked at, you can go through the vehicle very quickly in your mind. And then once you know what it is that vehicle needs, you grab that tablet, you fire off the pictures, and then it's just one simple move, 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 and you're in there. You're not bouncing back and forth between things. You're not setting this down to shake this, pick this back up. My hands are all dirty now. Now my screen's all messed up because I got grease on my finger. All that's gone. You're sitting down with it one time, knocking it out, sending it out. Very true. And I would say this is the most common process we see in shops today, whether they've made that digital uh, transformation or not, even if they're doing paper inspections, right? Um, we see this most often, uh, this method. I especially, think. especially since the shops that have been online with us for several, a couple of months, once they've gotten past the dip, it usually yeah. is this method I've actually seen shops start off line by line. And a lot of times it's getting the shop to switch the text to switch to this method that can actually pull them out of that dip because the text can now become more efficient at completing the inspection. And so it gets them into that closer into that integration mark on the chart. Very true. Had an extra slide in there. Jill will take care of that day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to blame that on Cra on Craig, I think, uh, as well. So, well, you know what? Yeah. It's it's the fair thing to do. It is. <laughs> the hell yeah. Craig should be talked about twice. <laughs> we yeah. just wanted you to chime in up there, Craig. Well, you've been quiet for a while, so we're not used <laughs> to that silence. Yeah. So, video inspection. Um, this is a unique and developing uh, method um, that um, kind of leverages that current way that we. Um, best consume information, right? I think a lot of you uh, answered uh, early on and there were some, you know, some really great comments. Um, looks like from our, our poll, like we had mentioned about 32% here are using videos currently in their DVIs. And the other 
um, 68 um, are not on a regular basis, right? Um, so what does, um, you know, the video tends to, uh, I think, build trust faster with customers, right? There's less of a uh, stigma around video uh, that, uh, you know, you've edited the video or you, is this, is this actually my car that we're looking at, right? So it builds trust faster uh, with those customers and, uh, and it's easy for them to consume, right? If we'd look at um, generations today, right? That we're actually servicing in the shop now, how do they consume uh, information now? Uh, Michael, how do your, how do your kids, uh, wh- what platforms are they on currently? Well, let's see. I mean, and I, I have probably the, almost the perfect, age bracket for this i've got a 14 year old and a freshly turned 13 year old so i now have two 13 year old daughters two teenage daughters so i have a feeling this color is going to start creeping <laughs> up, up north uh for what's le- what stays up there after this but it it's instagram tiktok um yeah they're 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 consuming short video clips at an alarming rate uh on a regular basis constantly all day long it's yeah it's this it's in their hands it's and you hear the videos and then you watch them make their own videos and your kids walking down the street doing weird arm things and <laughs> right not even paying attention to anything else that's going on along you, you, uh, you didn't streets. know what they were yeah. doing you would think this whole generation had something wrong with them because they just walk around convulsing and tur- and tweaking and turning and, and dancing around constantly but you don't realize that they set this they will do it they will do it in the grocery store they will set the phone up on the on the counter and like, I got to do a quick video and they're in the grocery store doing little. Yep. Absolutely. Anyway, and press, we got a little off topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a little bit about the videos, right? Um, you know, I, I think as far as videos themselves go, it's when you're shooting video and adding them to your DVI, um, you almost always, I would say it's nearly a must uh, that you need to have audio. Right. Um, because a video without audio um, is probably worse than just a picture, uh, quite honestly. Right. They don't know what they're looking at, um, things of that nature. Right. So, videos, uh, super relatable. Um, as we mentioned, you know, it kind of takes that car, the lift, and, and um, the tech, and it brings it right into their home setting. And uh, so they can easily comprehend and consume that information. And um, kind of, I, I think Brian, you mentioned earlier in one of your questions uh, or your comments in the chat there that um, it's easy for them to comprehend, right? Um, and they are more in the aspect of making a an informed sales decision rather than um, being under the pressure uh, of of a you know of a hard sale or anything else like that, right? So, and it's just like um, you know taking a waiting customer back in the shop, right? And showing them what's going on with their vehicle. A video allows you to do that, but at a distance, right? Yeah. So fantastic. So one case study I wanted to um, bring up that I was involved with actually, uh, this is a large shop on the Denver, Colorado area. Um, does anyone know what the national upsell rate for multi-point inspection identified work? Any any clues, Michael? Do you know? No, I don't. I think it's right around. If I remember correctly, it's right around twenty-seven to thirty percent. Actually, is what uh, the national upsell rate for for multi-point identified work essentially is. So this shop, they were a little bit better than average, right at about thirty-two percent prior uh, to adding DVIs. The tech started making some uh, short videos for their DVIs. They, they transitioned from pictures um, and the standard digital video inspection over to digital or over to video only, guys. Um, 100% video. They started made it, making some short video clips uh, and the advisors would then review and audit those video clips. Um, and of course, follow the same process uh, that we'll talk about here in, a, in just a little bit, get their reps in. Um, but 
what they saw was their upsell rate nearly doubled. It went to um, about 63%, uh, essentially. And their year-over-year sales increased over 18% total. Uh, this shop had to add four additional technicians uh, for that workload uh, to handle that workload. So that's a huge increase just by going from um, the standard DVI into a full video inspection. So. And, and there, is, there is some things with the video inspection process that, that need to be addressed. It, it, the way I look at it is you do need to be more cognizant of what is going on around you when you are taking the video. video. Um, you do need to make sure that that things are are being narrated. I, I think that was a great point you made about video without sound. Um, video without sound is, and I, I don't even like to watch videos. I'll be in a situation where I can't watch a video. Someone will send me a video, and I'll, I'll wait till I can go somewhere else and watch it where I can listen to it at the same time because I don't want to watch it without the sound. Um, and that's where we're doing these inspections. I have actually seen one shop do an inspection and this might be a little bit of a unique process, but I liked what they were doing with it. The advisor would actually go out and take the video of the tech and the tech was going around the vehicle, narrating the items that they were finding. Mm-hmm. And so it was shot in a way that was a very informative. It was a technician Hi, Mr. Customer. My name's so and so. I'm the technician working on your vehicle today. I'm going to go through and show you a couple of things I found while I was working on your car. And he took the video and said, "Here's this." And then they put that in that line. And then they would show the video, and it was it was narrated in a way. But when the customer, when I saw the end result of this DVI with these videos that were almost like a narrated story on their vehicle, as I clicked through the different videos on the lines, I could see how that would make a customer go feel a the direct connection with the technician there. Yep. That that technician telling the customer what what they're finding, showing them as they're finding it, shaking it, moving it. It it really gave the customer a different sense of I'm right there with the tech being shown what is wrong and why I need this. Uh, and Very that was something I thought was it was impressive. It I found I found the whole process to be incredible incredibly impressive again i'm sure they had a pretty big dip though when they were implementing something along these lines it had absolutely because it took it was a whole new type of a process but we could see with the results that they got the dip was worth it because once they came out of the dip they were seeing a very large increase very impressive that's a pretty cool process it reminded me uh of when I first started doing DVIs in general, just even with photographs, I had an apprentice uh, actually doing the work while the technician walked around narrating it. We weren't doing videos yet at the time. I don't even think the platforms allowed for it back in that day. Uh, but what an awesome learning opportunity it turned out to be for our apprentices that were shadowing the technician at the same time instead of the advisor's time. Great role for an apprentice to assist a technician on learning what they're looking at while recording it. Very it true. All right. And that's the thing. I, I would like to see more and more video and get, in, get implement, implemented into the DVI on top of using things like AutoNet TV, Moto Visual. Those are also videos that can be used in those places that I think really go hand in hand with either a photo inspection or a video inspection still. Um, but those videos, I really think, should be getting included in every in every DVI. I I, I think that alone should have our our rate at a hundred percent videos on DVIs by using something like that. But we're get there. We're getting there. I think we will see a spike in video in video uh, DVIs here in the next month. We're watching. We're watching. We are watching. We're watching. You. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to actually go into the the kind of the real nitty gritty of the DVI itself. And this is the construction. This is the building of the DVI by the technician. 
What is the technician actually looking for? What are they trying to find? What are they documenting? We need to know, again, this is all part of a process that we're building. And one of the questions I get a lot, still to this day, how do I know what's green, yellow, and red? What, 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 does, what do you use as your barometer to know? And when I look at this, obviously everyone knows green is okay. Green means everything's good. It's the yellow and red where people get, get, get a little fuzzy. The way I like to look at it is yellow. These are things that are, that are safety issues. Um, are these, things, these are things that are not safety issues. But if left unaddressed, eventually they will become a mechanical breakdown or a mechanical failure over an extended period of time. A red item is an item that one, is a safety item or the item is in such poor condition that it is going to cause an immediate or very near future mechanical failure. Like the ball joint story I told, that was an item marked red because it was something that could have caused an immediate failure, which it did when they didn't fix it. Um, but being able to understand the difference of why you mark something yellow, why you mark something red is very important in this aspect because it allows you to dictate to the customer the importance of something needing done. Car comes in and I see that it's got brakes at one bonded rotors are grooved, rusty. I live in the breast belt. All rotors are rusty around here. Um, and I also noticed based on time and mileage, their transmission fluid needs done. The time and mileage maintenance item is going to be yellow because guess what? If the car comes back in six months, chances are it's not going to break down because we didn't change the fluid in that six month period. The brakes are going to be red because if we don't replace these brakes now, they're not going to make it to the next oil change. They need to be addressed while we have it here today. Um, I would agree with that. I would agree with that, Michael. I think that, um, you know, that this essentially is uh, something that's different in every shop, right? The thresholds as far as uh, green, red, and yellow items. The, the barometer that I always used was, um, you know, is that something that uh, you would um, advise your grandmother uh, to get repaired on their car? You know, if that's the case, then it's probably red, a red item, right? Um, I like um, the the yellow items to be reserved for maintenance items like this that might be necessary um, as well. And then um, you present it as findings uh, to the customer and, and let them make the decision, right? Um, now, one thing I do like to do though, if I recommended a transmission flush on the last visit and I made it yellow and we come to the second visit and it still needs done, I'm at some point, I'm going to change that from a yellow to a red. If it has not been addressed, yep. you know, if they come in and it needs to do at 60 and they're at 58, it's yellow. When they come back in at 63, it's yellow. But when they come back in at 70, I'm marking it as red at that point because now we've recommended it for the last year to be done. It, it, it's really time to get it done before it starts to cause an issue. Yep. And, and Craig's making some great, con or, uh, great, um, I was just reading the comments, comments in the chat there, uh, essentially, yeah, um, you know, consistency uh, amongst your team members is, is a very key thing here um, when you're actually determining the status of, of an item, whether it's green, red, or yellow, right? Um, we certainly don't want somebody uh, calling something red on one visit, and the next visit it comes back and it's green and, um, you know, it hasn't been addressed or something like that. that tends to degrade the credibility within the shop than in the in the customer's eyes. Yeah. So even even from yellow and red, that aspect, if if it was marked red the last visit and then the next time it comes in, someone marks the same thing yellow, it does. It makes things incredible or not credible. And the shop should be having a process that everyone is marking things the same way as far as the levels go. Um it this is something I, Craig made another point I liked over there is uh, the industry needs to adapt to clear and concise uh, consensus on this. This is something where if we could put out some form of structure that yellow, green, yellow, red, that the industry would follow, which we all know that's going to be very hard to adapt. You did getting an industry to adapt anything. 
is very complicated. Um, you ever, yeah, any, any industry. <laughs> so another thing that becomes a very big component of taking or creating a good DVI boils down to photos and videos, photos and videos, a list of items. I cannot tell you when I go back in to, to do a training, a, a retrain of a shop and I go in, I look at their old DVIs and I see 10 items marked yellow and red, 10, eight items marked yellow, red, six items marked yellow, red, and one photo, zero photos. What this DVI, this is just a list of items. I could, I could call the customer over the phone and say, Hey, here's what we found. It doesn't. It doesn't do what we told the customer it was going to do at the beginning. Remember, we set that expectation. We're going to send you a report that's going to have videos, pictures, showing you what's wrong with your vehicle. I shouldn't see that when I look back in because the advisor should come in and say, hey, we didn't get pictures. Go get pictures. But this is boiling down to the quality of those photos. They, there needs to be quality. Um, I've also looked at a lot of shops where I go in and yeah, they took a picture, but it's blurry. It's taken from a distance. I have no clue what I'm actually looking for. The taking a good quality photo does become important. And there's a couple simple steps you can take to get a good quality photo. One thing is have lighting, use the flash. If the tablet doesn't have a flash, use your flashlight, use the shop light. There are ways to create light in the shop. Use it. Another thing, wipe the lens down. Those, it's in a shop. There's dust on it. There's funk on it. It gets set in things. Clean the lens every once in a while. That'll go a long way to getting a good crisp photo. And also review the photos. If you take the picture, it loads, take a quick look at it. If it doesn't look good, delete, take a second one. Real simple. But look at the photo before you move past. Just make sure it's good quality. One of the things I did want to touch on this earlier, and I apologize, I did it, totally forgot to do this. So I'm going to do it here as we're talking about photos. I'm actually going to go into auto text me and I'm going to go into a DVI. And when we were discussing the things about like the head start and loading photos, we do have a good quality photo now. So I'm in our DVI for Joe Paluca, who gets his car serviced with any auto text me trainer shop way too often. But when I come in and I, I'm working that Head Start program that I normally do, I've already gone around the vehicle. I've already taken my photos. I already know the items that are bad. So I can come into the first line that I want to add my photos, and I can add my photos. To and I'm actually going to go into a separate. And I'm going to take from my photo gallery all. If I can click on my mouse properly. We would have had that. Let's do that again. I'm going to click and grab all of my photos at one time, and I'm going to load them onto one line. This sure speed things up, speeds things up, Michael, then rather than allowing them or waiting for each individual photo to upload uh, in that line, line by line. 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 Now, yeah. all my photos, now all my photos are on the DVI inspection sheet. And this is where I can then come through and I can move photos. I, I can come in here and I can say, okay, well, where does this photo need to go? So I'm going to move the image. This image is going to go to the wipers. That image is going to stay in four corners. That image is going to go to the sway bar link. And another bad sway bar link on Joe's vehicle. Holy cow. I know. I, I saw. I saw uh, Gerald Martin's comment there about uh, he, this. The poor guy has had way too many sway bar links replaced. I'd hate to see the Carfax report for Joe. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> you can see I can move these photos to wherever I need them to go. I want to move. 
And I'm glad you're highlighting that piece. It's an underutilized feature within the image modal, and uh, yeah. it is the quickest way to get pictures. Now, now all my photos are loaded in. Good, good. Add my note, torn wiper blade, boom. Physical so save. Now I'll put in my recommendation for repair. Save it. Move on. Good, good. These are all things I checked. They all marked off good for me. But I already see the lines. Now, in this particular case, I loaded some photos. I'm going to mark them good. I am taking pictures of some maintenance items that are in good condition, and I'm going to do it every time. I like to see a photo of fluids and a, flo a photo of filters on every inspection sheet, every time the customer comes in. Because what we're going to find in this case is we're going to see degradation over time. Customer comes in, filters all nice and clean. Next time they come in, it's still clean. Next time it's a little dirtier. But the customer is going to see that get done. The customer also sees that we're just documenting information. We're not just using this report to sell them something. Why else would we take a picture of something that's in good shape? Just to show the customer that this is still this is in good shape. But they can also then watch it degrade over time. Yep. And I think it goes to add credibility too, right, Michael? I mm -hmm. mean, if we're adding pictures to items that are identified as good, um, then we're not trying, it's not only adding pictures to things that we're trying to upsell. So it adds credibility uh, for the customer from the customer's perspective as well. Exactly. It definitely does. So that's the and, first part that I wanted to show inside the tool is I did want to go and show how those photos load. You bet. And, and while you're here, Michael, um, is there a way to actually tag um, an item, uh, a photo that actually um, addresses the customer's concern in the DVI? Well, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. And we were to discuss this as we did to the, the prep before we, we submit the DVI. <laughs> Look at the time. Look at us go. I'm going to go back to that in a second. I do want to get through this last couple of slides here, and we will hit on that. But like we said, we talked about the maintenance items, wear and tear items, build value, show the degradation over time. We want the pictures to do that. Now, as we get into this before sending, this is where we're going into our reps. And this is review all findings, estimate all findings, prepare the presentation, and send the report. Customer cannot open it if they don't receive it. Also, when you do not send a well done report that a tech did to a customer, to me, the slap in the face to the technician. Technician took his time to do it, the customer should see it. So we want to make sure we're following this reps review, estimate, prepare, send. Now, I'm going to go back into the tool for this because part of the review is where we were. And Greg, it goes right into the point you were making, which is that RVH, that reason the vehicle is here. When a customer comes in, when we sell service to a customer, a customer came in for a particular uh, problem, in this case, rattle over bumps. I'm going to tell the customer what I found that fixed the problem they came in for first and foremost. It's the first thing I'm going to tell the customer before I go in and talk about the other items that need to be addressed that we found while we were looking over their vehicle. So I can come into this RVH, click on the pencil and paper, go to the edit. And right here is the list of all my DVI items alphabetically. I'm going to use my filter. So I'm going to look for items marked yellow and red. And then I can tag the line that actually fixes the customer's car. Once I tag the line, I can update it and it's going to tag that line to the DVI, the customer's reason they brought the vehicle in. Now, when the customer looks at this report, they're going to see it as, here's the information, here's what I brought it in for, here's what fixes my problem, here's the other items we found while we were looking. The next thing I want to get into in the preparation standpoint of this is actually marking up of images. Marking up of images should be done, and again, the way I look at it, if I showed the picture to my mom, would it make sense? Like my mom would understand what a torn wiper blade is. Sway bar link? Maybe not. Again, we want to go in and just point out 
what the customer is looking at. We want to show them, hey, focus your attention here. This is what I want you to see. Here is the explanation of what is going on. I think that's the first time I've ever typed on live camera without a typo. So congratulations to me. Um, but now I'm marking hey, up that in. Yes. Quick question from Clayton. Uh, the DVI history, I think there's two spots that we can point out that accordion. He noted that he did not see the history on his DVI. Uh, if you scroll up just a little bit and the accordion for history, and I believe that one right there, we have that there. That will be there if you go into DVI setup can turn off pre-populating your DVI line items. This is the alternate way to show the DVI line items. But at the very top of all DVIs, at the very, very top near the send button, there's the sheets button and previous history for all users there, regardless of your setting. Uh, and this will be across multiple locations too. If you have a, as you can see, there's been multiple shops in our demo instances. And because this is actually something, if you have multiple shops, this is something that you can actually look into with the multiple shops. You can actually see the shop that this vehicle was at. The if DVI it's in your network. Form. If it's in, if it's in your shop, if it's one of your shops. Yes. Um, so these are things, if you are not um, getting this, please reach out to us so that we can save you, especially if you're a multi-shop owner, we can set up this, this system so that we, you can start looking at these history across your multiple shops. If you have customers that frequent different locations. That is where you find your histories. You can also find line by line item histories too. Um, I know if I go into the customer and I hit the line, the number next to it, it's going to pull up histories for that customer. How many items, how many times that item has been marked bad or good. good. Thank you, sir. Very good. That's uh, just about it for time. If there's more questions here, uh, please let us know. Glad to answer. Yeah. Please do. I didn't realize we got right up to that hour pretty quickly today, didn't we? Yeah, it always goes fast in that seat, man. Good job. Craig, are there any questions we can go over real quick before we bounce? I were clear on questions, but Brian had says uh, thanks on the RVH. Uh, that That's new to him. He had not seen that. Uh, the RVH tagging is one of our favorite features. We're going to try to do a better job getting that information out to you folks so you can uh, dive a little deeper into these APIs. Exactly. And again, I would like to thank everyone for joining us. Greg, thank you very much for joining me today. This has been wonderful. Uh, Craig, thank you for the opportunity to, to, to sit in the driver's seat of this. It's been a good time. Um, and again, I just want to let everyone know the training staff with AutoText Me is always available to help out. Please reach out through support and they will get you in touch with a trainer and we can help in any way. Good job, Michael. Thanks for taking the lead on this. Thank Thanks, you very Craig. much. Have a great day, everybody.